Yesterday, I was walking through Tirana for the first time in my life. <laughs> and you know, this exciting feeling of being somewhere for the first time, you watch, who? <laughs> well, I'm an architect and I watch buildings. Boring. <laughs> and I'm a filmmaker and I'm looking for stories, lots of stories here. And, uh, and I'm from Amsterdam, and I'm always looking for bicycles. <laughs> no bicycles at all. <laughs> and I thought, I thought... <laughs> I thought that's a bad sign for progress. So, I was walking through the streets of uh, Tirana, and I met this uh, traffic light. You know, when you're visiting a city for the first time, you don't see the city for the first time. You're surrounded with a wall of memory. And you look around and you think, hey, I recognize that. I know that. It's filtered through your memory. It's, it's filtered through what you know. You bring yourself always with you. This wall of memory. Now, how did Jules Verne imagine himself going to the moon? No one ever had been on the moon. Well, even after 150 years, I have not been on the moon, have you? And he imagined himself how to launch people to the moon. And he thought, well, let's make this big cannon. That he knew, a big cannon. And of course, he's launching through that cannon a big bullet. So that we know. Big cannon you need and a big bullet. And inside that bullet, you can transport people. Well, I try to imagine how they felt when the, the cannon went bang. <laughs> inside that cannon. So that was completely out of his memory. But look how he imagined this bullet inside. It looks like a copy of a Paris room a classical Paris room. He thought, well, we make it much comfortable. He brought himself, he brought his memory, a bookshelf and uh, a leather couch. And even, if you look at the left, a stove, because it can be cold out there. <laughs> so we always bring our memory. And while I was waiting to cross the road and saw more Cayenne is passing by and Mercedes and saw the progress of the things. I was thinking about that wonderful imprint that we all carry with us, but that, that we've learned when we were a child. That's always the thing I ask people, do you remember the road from your house to your school when you were six years old? And even after 50 years, people can exactly tell how it looked like, how it smelled. I sometimes ask my students, can you make a drawing of it? And some people can, like this one, describing all the houses and the little streets and, and the tissue of the urban uh, circumstances and the fences. Well, this must be an architect. And some people even draw houses and some people, but some people just write words. I remember tweet, tweet, tweet of the birds. So this is what we carry with us. You know, the world is a mental thing. It's not what we see, it's what we know is our memory. The world is our, in our brains. So I was waiting and I was thinking about this wonderful story. A student of me told me about his time in Indonesia, when he went for the first time to school, he lived in a very remote village, a little village in Sumatra, and he was walking 45 minutes every day to his school from this little village. And he brought his brother with him. And sometimes it was rainy, sometimes it was sunny, that tropical temperature, temperature you, you will know and you, you feel the, the heat and the damp and you hear the birds and sometimes a snake, and those unpaved roads. 
And he told me this story that at one moment after a walk of 40 minutes, he hit this very dense road, very heavy traffic there, and he had to pass. But coincidentally, his grandmother was there. Wow, that's a funny surprise. And he was so happy to see her and to help her to the other side of the road. So he helped her to the other side of the road. He went to school, came back after school, and there she was again. What a surprise. And she said, Grandma, he said to his grandma, can I help you to the other side of the road? And she wanted to be helped, and he helped her to the other side of the road. And next day again, he walked with his brother through the tropical heat, and he thought, would she be there again? And she was there again. And he helped her over, what a coincidence, he wanted to be to the other side. He helped her over and after school, and it went on for weeks. And then, one day, he came to that road, and there was no grandmother. So, where could she be? But there was a policeman. And the policeman stopped the traffic, and he could go to the other side with his brother. And at the end of the school, he returned to the street. No grandmother, the police. And the policeman helped him to the other side, safety. And he thought, well, I go visit my grandmother. So he went to the house of his grandmother and he said, Grandmother, why haven't you come anymore? And then she told him, because there is a policeman now. <laughs> you know, in the 19th century, psychiatrists already knew that our perception of the world is different. We can look at the world in a different way. We can see a duck and a rabbit in this picture. So it's the perception of the world. And of course, we know uh, the representation of the world is something different. We can make something out of something else. We can make a rabbit out of our hands. And one step further, we can make hands out of our rabbits. <laughs> but that, that picture, you don't understand without knowing the other two. So I was waiting for the traffic light, having all these thoughts, very rich thoughts, surrounded by the Albanian fumes of the cars. And I was thinking about a project we once did as an architect and a filmmaker. It's called Cycling Cities. I was invited to come as a curator to Beijing to curate a film festival. And they asked me, can you make for this occasion a special film about Beijing? Uh, something you think is special in Beijing. Now we're talking about a city, a metropole of 25 million people. So Everything is special in Beijing. <laughs> and I've been thinking, what can you do? What can you do? Well, Beijing used to be the cycle city in the world. There were not, 50 years ago, there were more cyclists in Beijing than in any other city. Everybody was cycling. And then progress came. <laughs> You're listening, oh well, progress came. And the cyclists were kicked out of the streets, and in came the cars, and no one is cycling in Beijing anymore. And with the fumes of the cars, last year there was more than 50% increase of children's cancer in the city. Isn't that a waste in progress? It's horrifying. So, well, yeah, it's sad, it's sad. So I was thinking maybe we can do something with cycling and make people more aware of what it takes. I'm from Amsterdam and it looks like this, quite chaotic. And I thought, well, we should do something. And we had this idea of making a film about cycling. We just followed someone who's cycling through the streets of Amsterdam, doing a special route, passing by bridges, canals, going through a park, a square, that's the guy we followed, and it looked something like this. So this is just an average uh, little street in Amsterdam, and you see how much... Uh, uh, ah, he's even carrying a second bike there. <laughs> how much bicycles are 
in the road and it's hard to follow him. But that's wonderful. It's quiet, it's nice, it's non-polluting. So we thought of doing the same, exactly the same, in Beijing. Doing the same thing, crossing a bridge, doing big streets, smaller streets, iconic buildings, um, whatever, through parks, and all filmed from the same angle of the camera. And we asked people, do you recognize this spot? We showed them what we filmed in Amsterdam, and we asked them, do you recognize this street? And they said, yeah, yeah, I recognize that, that just around the corner here. They didn't see that was that, oh yeah, yeah, that's, we got a street like that. So we went through Beijing and filmed the same spaces, not places, but the same spaces here. I am on a scooter, you see how we filmed him. <laughs> that's our guy, that's our main character, and we filmed him. And we projected both films, 24 shots aside each other. And it looked like that. And people, when they saw it for the first time, they were amazed, they were stunned, and I was surprised. I thought, well, it's not a big deal. You see two cyclists doing about the same thing in, in a historical part and a historical part of Amsterdam. And then we got invitations from all over the world and from Mexico. They said, can you do it in Mexico too? And uh, this is in Mexico. And uh, uh, we got invitations from uh, Havana. We went to Havana. To th there was only one cycle left, bicycle. <laughs> so we stole that one and, um, and did it with a, a Cuban uh, cyclist. Wonderful. And now we are one and a half year later and we have eight cities and more to come. We wanted to do it in Tirana. Would it be wonderful to do it in Tirana, don't you think? <laughs> So here you see the projected cities alongside each other. And we showed it in Milan at a, a festival, a film festival in Milan, and people came to see the differences and what was the same in all these cities. This is at the festival in Rotterdam. So I was still waiting to cross that road. And uh, I was thinking about this wonderful project two artists in, in Holland did, about the same and the difference. It was a, a, a topic about, well, these girls, you see them everywhere in Holland. She thinks it's, she's special, and she is, of course. And they were looking for other girls that looked in a way the same. So the project is called Exactitudes. And you know they're all different, but you know they're all the same in the same way. So it's wonderful if you have this notion of how you look and how you think you are different. And when you walk in streets, you always bring your memory and how you think things are looking. So finally, <laughs> finally, the traffic light turned on green and we could walk. And I walked to the other side of the road. And when I arrived there, I turned around and looked back. And it was a kind of the same view I had from the other side of the road. So I was wondering, why did I cross? <laughs> why did I tell you this story? I think because I recognize something. That wherever you go, there's always this feeling of being home. Searching for what you have in your mind that feeling of being common wherever you go. Thank you very much.